former Navy SEALs and veterans are getting ready to take to the seas once again for a very good cause here. Local 10 Cyra Onward is live from Miami to tell us more about their Do Good mission. Hi, Syra. Hey, Alex. So this is called Beyond the Teams. It's a group of Navy SEAL veterans and they take on these challenges to raise money for charities associated with the Navy SEAL Museum in Fort Pierce. This latest challenge they're doing, it's really cool. They're going on this long journey by canoe. If it was easy, we wouldn't be doing it. Slow down, we gotta rotate. Paddling 300 miles certainly isn't easy. Five in. We are paddling from Key West to Fort Pierce to raise money for the four charities that are run by the Navy SEAL Museum. Those charities include scholarships, a respite house, canines, and medical assistance for Navy SEAL veterans and their families. It's really incredible to see these guys out there on the ocean paddling, um, to think that you know many of them are over 60 years old, and their experience in the military and their training has allowed them to continue to be physically fit to do this type of uh, mission. I'm not going to take it personal. We joined the team as they left this morning from Coconut Grove on an outrigger canoe. There are two six-man teams who swap out every 45 minutes for six hours a day until they reach the Navy SEAL Museum in Fort Pierce on Memorial Day. It's one of many efforts and impressive physical feats beyond the teams organizes to raise money for their charities. It's the unique, unusual character of what we're doing that draws, draws people's attention to the, the cause. A cause they say is vital for the families of those who lay their lives down for their country. This is why we came to do this, so that we could get to the end and say, yeah, we did it, what's next? And these guys can really do anything. Well, tonight they plan to uh, stop in Boca Raton before continuing tomorrow on their journey where they'll eventually end up in Fort Pierce on Memorial Day. Reporting live in Miami, Syra Onwar, Local 10 News.
go shitty, we just gotta, we gotta make something. You look so bad, we gotta switch you out. Roger, Roger. You got the vector, Victor? That's the hit. Go forward, forward, forward. That's right, that's right. Yeah. Good teamwork going on out there. Yeah, good work. Yeah, oh. uh, yeah. Good, good. Let me give you this real quick. Yep. Nice job, gentlemen. Oh, Mike Donnelly just asked Norte how his fat ankle was doing. Norte aggravated an old injury during the paddle into Key Largo. Naturally, I was billeted with him at the hotel and he brought this injury to my attention. This kind of injury is especially heinous to an airborne infantryman. You need your feet available to you as landing gear, personnel carriers, and weapons at all times. I asked him if there was anything I could do to help him, you know, get some ice or get the Epsom salt out of the trunk of my car, something like that. While those things are all effective treatment for the injury at hand, my brother had something else in mind altogether. He needed a foot and ankle massage. I know that all you think that's real funny right now, but that just proves out your shallow mindedness. All our brothers from Echo 82 know that I set him on fire on the third day of our friendship just because I thought it would be funny to watch him wake up and see himself on fire. I mean, haven't you ever just set someone on fire just because you were bored? Come on, judge not lest you be judged. This man had a problem with his most precious commodity as a soldier, and he had some secret Chinese ointment that his smoking hot girlfriend gave him. I figured that if I gave him a good foot and ankle massage that it was the least I could do for him for setting him on fire. Trust me, I had a lot worse than that coming to me, but he let it slide. Yeah, boys.
The boat crews make it to Hillsboro Inlet to take it on into the recovery point. They are almost home and things have become really frustrating. The boat traffic here is crazy and there are a lot of power boaters in a holding pattern to get under a drawbridge. The guys are hot, tired, and things are about to get stressful. The guys avoided a lot of issues in Miami by getting started early. Thereafter, much of the water traffic was commercial. Experienced bar pilots were at the helm of the big boats. Now we are in a land of boats, a great number of them, with someone at the helm who has a lot more dollars than cents. Things can get really, really silly, really, really quick, and usually do, especially on a Friday. When the guys get the chance to make their run, the tide is ripping through the channel and they have to pull hard to make headway against it. I know that they're the most important people in the world, the people who have got that boat, but they could have a little concern for others. <coughs> All right. I'm 
Try to hit that truck over there if you can. Hey, did you get my uh, pretend slip saddles? Lumpy, get on us. Lumpy, up here. Right, get on this. Seriously, guys, come on. Oh, I can't just throw my camera on the ground. Well, hello there. The cameraman sound like he got an attitude. At this point in the journey, everybody's nerves are absolutely frazzled. Now add some exhaustion. Yeah, that's right. I bet it was a tough day, wasn't it? Lionfish areas in the country. So make sure you have some type of uh, here. I'll bet today wasn't all that uh, fun. No, it was, I wouldn't say fun. It was challenging, but it was good. We're good. We're here. Good. Lance, what's up? Ready? You know what happened next. Dash to the hotel, check in, get a shower and a change of clothes, then it's off to the Waterstone for the evening fundraiser. The museum brought along one of their fur missiles so the crowd could meet and greet a canine hero. You can tell that the guys are exhausted because they've all got their shirts on. The ladies, however,